Six horses die in a Woodford County fire, a horse farm that used to be owned by Saudi royalty. A bill is being proposed that would set up a new retirement system in Kentucky. Coming up, we'll tell you why opponents say it's unnecessary. Looking on Defender out there, there is absolutely nothing going on. But as we go off into the night and into tomorrow, that low pressure system comes uh, flying on through to the south of us, and that will give us some snow for some locations. I'll explain where you can see that coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Barbara Bailey. I'm Bill Bryant. Here's what's happening at noon. A massive fire at a central Kentucky horse farm has killed several horses and destroyed two barns today. That fire broke out at Chanticleer Farm around 6 this morning on Aiken Road north of Versailles. Now this video of the scene from Sky First shows just how intense that fire really was, leveling both barns. WKYT's Mark Barber is live in Woodford County now with the latest on the investigation. It's our top story at noon. Good afternoon, Barbara and Bill. The flames and the smoke have died down here at the Shanta Claire Farm on Aiken Road, but crews say they are still out here going over the damage from the fire that burned two barns to the ground and killed six horses. Now, firefighters tell us that the fire started in a horse barn around 6 a.m. Fire crews say when they got here, there was nothing they could do to save the horses from the flames. We're told the heat from the fire sparked a fire at a second barn that was about 40 feet away. Crews say they were worried for their own safety at that point because the flames nearly jumped to a third barn that was holding propane tanks. We're told firefighters kept their distance from the flames and eventually put the fire out. According to property management, the Chanticleer farm was owned by a Saudi prince once. The property owners say five of their horses have competed in the Breeders' Cup since 2007. Firefighters tell us this is a devastating loss, and they are still trying to figure out what sparked the tragedy. I'm not sure what kind of heaters they had or anything like that yet. So, you know, it's possible if this, you know, if you're heating, trying to keep water from freezing, it could be something like that. But like I say, it's under investigation, and we don't know for sure right now. There is still no word at this time if the horses that were killed were thoroughbreds. Now, the property owners are not releasing a statement or saying anything about the extent of the damage, but one manager described the day to me as extremely difficult. Live in Woodford County, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. The fire chief says the cold became an issue for them this morning while they were running between the burning barn and a fire hydrant that was half a mile away. Well, it's another dry day in the bluegrass, slightly warmer temperatures out there, but we're tracking another system that could bring light snow to the south and the east in the overnight hours. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live now in our first alert weather center with the details on that. Yeah, we're looking at that big system down toward the south and southwest of us. It's not in our neck of the woods just yet. It'll take its own little time, but you look across first alert defender live radar, nothing going on. We have the clouds moving on in, streaming in out ahead of this system. And it's because of this system right here. Now, most of this stays to the south of us. It'll really just kind of slide right through the Gulf states, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, and off toward the Carolinas, and wreak havoc, too. I mean, you're talking about some good totals, especially for these people down south. They're not used to this, but what it's going to do is clip the south and southeastern portion of our viewing area. That's the best chance of actually seeing that as we continue to funnel in toward the night and into tomorrow morning. Now, the deal is, as we continue to watch that, it won't be much, but there's your winter weather advisories and temperatures are there in the 30s. We finish off the day there in the lower to mid 30s, and it looks like uh, our forecast is really, really going to be pretty. Uh, look, 33 is kind of nice, but that nice snow is really going to change some things. I'll talk all about this forecast and this Arctic blast coming up. All right, we'll see you in just a bit. We thank you, and the word is be prepared for slowdowns this afternoon on a busy Lexington Road. Crews are repairing potholes on New Circle Road between Versailles and Leestown Roads. If your car is damaged by a pothole on a state road, you may be eligible for reimbursement. But it has to be a pothole that was not repaired in a timely manner after having been reported to the state. There will also be pothole patching until 2 o'clock this afternoon in Franklin County.
STATES OF EMERGENCY HAVE BEEN DECLARED AHEAD OF A WINTERY WEATHER MIX THAT IS EXPECTED TO HIT A HUGE PART OF THE SOUTH THIS EVENING. THE NATIONAL WEATHER SERVICE SAYS A MIX OF RAIN, SLEET, SNOW AND FREEZING RAIN IS EXPECTED FROM TEXAS ACROSS TO GEORGIA AND THE CAROLINAS. FORECASTERS SAY PRECIPITATION IS LIKELY TO END TONIGHT OR EARLY TOMORROW. BUT BELOW AVERAGE TEMPERATURES ARE EXPECTED TO CONTINUE FOR MUCH OF THE CENTRAL AND EASTERN U.S. AND THAT WINTER WEATHER STORM AFFECTING A LOT OF FLIGHTS HERE IN THE COMMONWEALTH today. A flight headed to Atlanta for tonight is already canceled at Bluegrass Airport. Two flights, one from Dallas and one from Atlanta, have also been canceled. Other news now. A homicide investigation is underway on Interstate 71 near Louisville in a fourth deadly shooting in that city in the last 12 hours. A man was shot to death inside a black Lexus SUV around 9 o'clock this morning. They're also investigating a midnight shooting off the Shawnee Expressway where a man in his late 40s to early 50s was gunned down in a house. And shortly before that, police say two men in their 20s were shot and killed in a car in the Shawnee neighborhood. So far, no arrests have been made in any of the shootings. Now, this makes 21 homicides in Louisville just this year. Lexington police are looking for two men accused of robbing a Lexington gas station. It happened shortly before 6 this morning at the marathon on New Circle at Russell Cave Road. Police say both men had their faces covered when they pulled a gun on the clerk and stole cash. A customer who had just left the store called 911. He said the robber spoke to him right before the crime. He's like, you know what this, you know what's up here, don't you? And at the time, I didn't notice the gun. And I'm like, I don't care what you're doing. And I turned around to walk away, and I seen the gun underneath his coat. And I knew what was happening then. And I just got in my truck like I hadn't noticed anything, and went next door to Shell and caught. Now the robbers reportedly ran towards the Hollow Creek neighborhood when they left the store. Police are now looking at surveillance video of the crime. Kentucky is getting attention from Dr. Phil. The television personality talked with Dalton Hayes, the teenager accused of going on a crime spree with his 13 year old girlfriend. Dr. Phil interviewed Hayes from jail in Grayson County. The 18 year old and his girlfriend, Cheyenne Phillips, are accused of stealing cars and forging checks before police caught up with them last month in Florida. That episode will air this afternoon. A committee hearing held in Frankfurt this morning is aimed at trying to help retirees in the state. The proposed Kentucky retirement account bill would create a retirement savings plan for all Kentuckians who lack access to a plan at their workplace. It could benefit nearly 800,000 Kentucky workers. WKYT's Victor Puente is in Frankfurt with reaction to that. Victor? Today's meeting was an informational one. There was no vote on this bill. It would establish the Kentucky retirement account which would allow private employers to offer a state-run plan to their employees for saving for retirement. State Treasurer Todd Hollenbach is one of the people behind House Bill 261, along with State Representative Martha Jane King. It would put a system in place that gives private employees access to a retirement system overseen by the state but managed by a private retirement planning group. The Treasurer said it was needed because almost 800,000 people in Kentucky work at jobs with no retirement savings opportunity. The plan would be voluntary. Employers could opt out. He said it wouldn't have any fiscal impact on the state and would give people who wouldn't otherwise plan for retirement the ability to do so. It's a win win for the uh, employees who would like to have convenient, easy access to retirement options, savings options. It's a win for the taxpayers of Kentucky who will end up shouldering the burden of, of underfunding for personal retirement savings if we don't do something about it. There was some opposition to the plan. The people who spoke against it basically said it was unnecessary because private companies already offer the same service, so there was no need for the state to get involved. In Frankfurt, Victor Puente, WKYT. Victor, thank you very much. And Treasurer Hollenbeck said approximately 20% of Kentuckians between the ages of 55 and 64 have no retirement savings. A bill that would change booster seat requirements for Kentucky children has cleared a House committee. Current state law requires children under the age of seven who are between 40 and 50 inches tall to ride in a booster seat. This new bill would change the age requirement to nine years old. It would also require children between 40 and 57 inches tall Hall to be in a booster seat. Every state that borders Kentucky has updated its laws to require a minimum of 57 inches tall.
U.S. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he backs an effort by fellow Kentucky Senator Rand Paul to create a presidential caucus in the state in 2016. McConnell says he supports the proposal because it would allow Paul to run for president and re-election to his Senate seat simultaneously. The caucus means Paul would not be on the ballot twice in the same election, which is barred by Kentucky law. Right. And the March 7th on the decision on that, by the way. That's right. We'll yeah. be following right. it, of course. Tickets go on sale next month for the 2015 Breeders' Cup World Championships at Keeneland this fall. Exciting times to meet the strong demand. Tickets will go on sale to the general public on Wednesday, March 4th, three months earlier than normal. Single day ticket prices range from $35 up to $375 on Friday, October 30th, and $50 to $475 on Saturday, the 31st. This will be the first time that the World Championships will be held at Keeneland. So, as we say, the excitement is on.